let's talk a bit about digital audio signal flow. I'm going to focus on digital audio workstations in this video, but these ideas expand beyond that family of softwares and are important in, for example, flow-based synthesis and programming environments like Reactor, Max MSP, or Kima. Signal flow is the path an audio signal takes from its source to output. Now, in analog systems such as analog mixers, analog effects, we're literally routing the electrical signal, the fluctuations in voltage, to flow to different places, splitting it, combining it, etc. In digital, like in our digital audio workstation software, this idea of signal flow is a bit more abstract, with numbers being fed into different algorithms at different times, but the model is the same as in analog. And it's especially clear in digital audio workstations where our mix window is set up very much in the same way that an analog mixer would be. Now, most simply, if we have an audio file in our DAW and we play it back, we know that the audio signal from that audio file is going to our output. But if we think about it, DAW software is especially useful for multi-tracking, having multiple audio signals playing at once. So all of those audio signals that we play at once need to be mixed together before they're sent to the output. Still a relatively simple signal flow, but another step. Now, to expand beyond this idea of simply combining signals, we can introduce buses. Buses are paths used to connect signals and they allow us to do more interesting things with our signal flow and things that can be very, very musically or sonically useful. Since our bus is just a path connecting signals, we need to specify where that path begins and where it goes, its origin and its destination. Look at this simple example I've put together in the Pro Tools Mix window, where I've got a couple buses set up. In this case, my main output are my speakers. So if we look at this vocals track, we can see that the signal flow is the audio track runs through the EQ, runs through the compressor, gets attenuated by this fader, and then goes out to my speakers. But additionally, I have a send here. A send, sometimes called an aux send, is an output on a mixer's track that allows you to route a copy of its signal. So where are we routing this to? Well, we're routing it to bus 3-4. This is our point of origin. That vocal track is sending to there. Where's its destination? Well, we can look here at the inputs for all of these tracks, and we can see that bus 3-4 comes over here in this aux track that's named reverb. Aux tracks are used for routing sound rather than holding any audio or instrument data. So these can be used for effects, submixes, or coordinating hardware instruments and effects. In this case, the sound goes into this aux track, and then it goes through this insert of the reverb plugin, and then where does it go out to? It goes out to the speakers too. In the analog world, sends often have returns where the signal comes back to the mixer. So we would send out to the effects unit, and then the mixer would have a return while the signal comes back in. In DAWs, often we don't think about the return since everything is happening internally. So really, the plugin is running within the DAW. But if we're sending to effects on aux tracks, we do have to make sure that the output of that aux track is going to the correct place. If we look at the guitar, same thing. EQ, compressor, goes to the speakers, also gets split out to 3-4, which is our reverb, and then that reverberated signal will be a mix of the send from the vocals, the guitar, and the snare, all sent through the reverb, which goes out to the speakers. Let's look more carefully at that snare though. Once again, it goes through this EQ, but the snare doesn't go out to our speakers. The output of the snare is another bus, this time bus 1-2. Where does bus 1-2 go? Well, again, this path has an origin here, and if we look next to it in the kick, the output for the kick is also bus 1-2. So then we follow the path of these two points of origin. They go into this aux track called drum submix. Makes sense. We mix the drums together. Now we'll have one slider that can control that overall snare and kick sound together. So I can turn these up and down in the mix together. I also have a compressor running here that will compress both the kick and the snare together. Importantly though, 
This time, I'm not using a send. I've set the output of these tracks to go to the bus. So since I'm not using a send, that means it's not sending a copy of the signal to the bus. It's sending the original, and the original isn't directly going to the speakers at all. Now I've been showing this mix window in Pro Tools, but the idea of digital signal flow isn't limited to any given software. Here's the same thing in Logic. And while visually it's a little bit different, these sends, buses, and aux tracks are functioning in the same way. Now, how to effectively use buses, sends, and aux tracks is a little beyond the scope of this video, but hopefully you can start to get the idea of how it might be useful to create submixes, use your plugins in more effective ways, and overall improve your workflow.